Good afternoon, folks. Uh, with anticipation of tomorrow's filing with the opinion decision with the Court of Appeals tomorrow, I thought I'd take this time and go over what Zoner was trying to test back when Judge Sukowitz denied her uh, brief abruptly without any consideration. So, the purpose of this letter is to clarify certain issues about the scientific testing that has been completed pursuant to Mr. Avery's motion for scientific testing filed on August 26, 2016, and the motion is Ms. Avery's pro se appeal. Filed on July 13, 2017 with the Wisconsin Appellate Court, as the court is aware, a stipulation was agreed to, to, to between the parties and a court order was entered on November 23, 2016 for scientific testing for some but not all of the items requested by Mr. Avery's motion for scientific testing. In November 23, 2016, stipulation and order for independent scientific testing, the parties stipulated scientific testing of nine items of evidence. A6, blood stain cutting from RAV4 to RAV receipt. A8, swab ignition of RAV4. A9, blood stain cutting from passenger seat. A10, swab of blood stain from CD case, swab from blood stain in rear passenger door. A7, blood flakes on the floor by the center council. Item ID, swab from the hood latch. Item C, Toyota RAV4 key, and a vial of blood from the 1996 sample of defendant's blood. The parties in the communication agree that the testing would be done in stages, and depending upon the outcome of testing, further testing could be done on additional items of evidence delineated in Mr. Avery's motion for scientific testing. Certain items of evidence have not been released for examination and retesting. They are summarized as follows. New DNA testing of evidence not previously tested, the prop, the battery cable, the interior blood, interior hood release of the victim's vehicle, blinker light, the lug wrench, the purple thong underwear, most for scientific testing, page 14. New and improved DNA testing for previously tested items, the license plates, the swabs taken from the victim's car. DNA testing in our burnt material found in the Red Dot Deer Camp. West of Avery Salvage Yard to determine whether there are any items of evidentiary value at the Deer Camp. A comparison of fingerprints of Sergeant Colborne, Lieutenant Link, and an unidentified prints on the victim's vehicle. Examination of a Motorola Razor phone box found in the victim's dining room. Examination of the victim's <coughs> excuse me, vehicle. Swaps from stains on the floor in Mr. Avery's garage, his bathroom, and his trailer. Swap from stains in Mr. Avery's vehicle. Unspent 22 long rifle ammunition recovered in Mr. Avery's trailer. November 23, 2016, order provided the following types of testing to be attempted on items of evidence discovered on previous page. DNA methylation testing for various blood stains, ballistic testing, rapid stain identification, testing for body fluid identification of the hood latch swab and key, and trace testing of the key and hood latch swab for a presence of chemical solvents or fibers. As the court ordered, on December 12, 2016, Mr. Avery's counsel accompanied Mr. A Avery's DNA expert, Dr. Carl Reich, in the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in Madison. Dr. Reich complied with the court order by observing state crime lab DNA analysis. Sherry Colhane divided samples in half. Ms. Zellner met with Assistant Attorney General Thomas Fallon and Special Prosecutor Norm Gahn for approximately 90 minutes to discuss the testing and other aspects of the case. The parties had previously agreed that, after a video examination, all samples would be split in half to afford the defense the opportunity to re-examine and test. The Honorable Judge Sikowitz, July 14, 2000, page 3, Swabs had an insufficient quantity of DNA for methylation and radiocarbon testing. Dr. Reich analyzed swabs from blood stains in the victim's vehicle at the laboratory, independent forensics in Lambert, Illinois, determined if the DNA present on the swabs was sufficient quantity for further testing. In particular, Dr. Reich examined items A6, A8, A9, A10, A12 to determine whether DNA present was sufficient quantity of DNA methylation. Dr. Reich, after analyzing the samples, determined that there was probably an insufficient amount of DNA present on the swabs for proposed DNA methylation test. However, Dr. Reich advised Mr. Avery Council to send these swabs to Dr. Christopher Mason, 
of Wheel Corner Medicine in New York City to confirm there was not enough DNA or swabs in DNA methylation analysis. On February 3rd, 2017, Dr. Mason received samples. On February 20th, 2017, after performing an independent examination, Dr. Mason concluded that because the DNA yield was so low, the evidence was inadequate for reliable DNA methylation testing. In fact, Dr. Mason informed Mr. Avery's post-conviction counsel that the quantity of DNA on some of the samples was undetectable. Mr. Avery's counsel informed Mr. Fallon Dr. Mason's conclusions on February 27, 2017. Dr. Reich also examined A7, blood flakes recovered from between the center council driver's seat of the victim's vehicle, to determine whether DNA present was sufficient quantity for radiocarbon testing. Dr. Reich determined that the quantity of DNA was too low for radiocarbon testing. Dr. Reich recommended that the flakes be sent to Dr. Mason to combine with the previously sent swabs to attempt DNA methylation testing again, because only one nanogram of DNA was needed for reliable DNA methylation test results. Mr. Avery's counsel is expecting Dr. Mason to report on his efforts to conduct DNA methylation testing with additional flakes added to the prior insufficient DNA samples from the swabs. An examination has been completed of the items ID and C, the hood latch swab, Toyota key, respectively, to determine the source of Mr. Avery's DNA detected on both items. Did it come from his blood, saliva, skin, etc.? Dr. Reich examined both the samples at the independent forensics and determined that the source of DNA on each Mr. Avery's was Mr. Avery's skin. Both samples were later transported to the Microtrace LLC in LG, Illinois for trace evidence. Examination by Dr. Chris Pelinick and Dr. Pelinick examined the hood latch swab and the Toyota key. Results of Dr. Reich and Dr. Pelinick's examination, including Mr. Avery's motion, post conviction relief filed on June 7, 2017. Dr. Reich conducted experiments on an exemplar key regarding the quantity of DNA that was alleged to have been on the sub-key from Teresa Halbach. Further, Dr. Reich conducted experiments on an exemplar hood latch regarding the quantity of DNA that was alleged to have been recovered from the RAV4 hood latch. The results of Dr. Reich analysis contained Mr. Avery's motion for post-conviction relief filed June 7, 2017. On May 5, 2017, Ms. Zellner, Mr. Douglas Johnson traveled to Madison, Wisconsin to meet with Mr. Fallon and Mr. Gahn, discuss the outcome of the test results, requested additional items for testing. After a 90-minute meeting, it was agreed that the damaged bullet, the FL, would be brought to the Microtrace Laboratories by an agent of the state for microscope inspection in the Microtrace Laboratories in Elgin, Illinois. On May 19, 2017, the court approved the release of the damaged bullet collected from Mr. Avery's garage, FL, for re-examination, Dr. Pelinig performed trace examination of the damaged bullet, May 22, 2017. The results of Dr. Pelinig's examination included Mr. Avery's motion for post-conviction relief filed June 7, 2017. The bullet fragment did not have bone fragments embedded in it. It would have if it had shot through two layers of human skull. But the bullet fragment did have wood and quite probably paint on it. July 5, 2017, additional request was made by Mr. Fallon for the release of cranial fragments. For further examination, Dr. Pelony believes that the sufficient reason to examine the cranial fragments defects identification and gunshot entrance wounds. Mr. Avery's trial to confirm with scientific certainty using the newest SEM microscope and other technology if the victim was even shot, if she was shot, whether it was by a 22 long rifle. Dr. Pelling made the request after examining the radiographs taken by Wisconsin Crime Lab analysis Kenneth Olson and all other pertinent information related to the state's claim caused the death was a result of a gunshot wound to the head by a 22 long rifle. However, we do believe, contrary to Mr. Fallon's assertion, that the results of the microscopic examination of the bullet fragment by our experts at the inter internationally renowned laboratory microtrace with SEM microscopes not available in 2005 and 2007, so undermines the state's theory that Mr. Halbach was killed by a gunshot to the head with proceeded to the file. Our motion for post-conviction relief relies upon the new scientific evidence combined with all the other claims. More than 25 claims of in ineffective assistance of trial counsel. For claims of alleged Brady violations, six claims of newly discovered evidence, Eight claims of alleged ethical violations by one of the prosecutors, multiple claims of ineffective assistance of post-conviction and appellate counsel, and a request for a new trial in the interest of justice. On July 12, 2017, Attorney Zellner spoke to Mr. Fallon about the fact 
Mr. Avery's pro se appeal was still pending before the Wisconsin Appellate Court. Mr. Zellner, Ms. Zellner and Mr. Fallon had several detailed conversations since the entry of this court order regarding scientific testing about the statu statues of the case. Mrs. Zellner informed Mr. Fallon that she was going to file a motion to dismiss for pro se appeal. Mr. Fallon stated that the Attorney General would not require their refiling Mr. Avery's post conviction petition. Ms. Zellner and Mr. Richards prepared to send the motion to dismiss in the Wisconsin Appellate Court via Federal Express on the same day, July 12th. As this conversation with Mr. Fallon, the motion to dismiss was sent via Federal Express because the Wisconsin Appellate Court does not have electronic filing. All parties in this court were given notice that the motion had been filed. On July 13th, Mr. Zellner's office confirmed the Wisconsin Appellate Court confirmed receiving the docketing of Mr. Avery's motion to dismiss his pro se appeal, subsequent confirming that the motion to dismiss Mr. Avery's pro se appeal had been filed. The court appeals. Zellner Offices that received Mr. Fallon's letter filed his court. Apparently, Mr. Fallon had not yet received notice that filing Mr. Avery's motion dismissed pro se appeal when he sent this letter to the court. Hopefully, this letter clarifies the current status of the Avery case. Now, she wanted to go and retest everything, and then she sent in a thousand page document detailing everything she wanted to test, and Judge Sukowitz prematurely just dismissed it so yeah it's just a little overview it's nothing new it's old news but there's new people in this case every day so i guess it's kind of good to go back over things sometimes you guys have a good day